Hey, what's up, beer tubers? Eric today coming back at you with another beer review. It is uh, middle to late May here in Minnesota. We're slated to get quite a few storms today, so um, I figured I would um, go back to a stout. Today I'm going to be looking at something from 9 26, 2011. This is a Bell's Expedition Stout that has been sitting in my basement for some time, as you can see. So this is two and a half years old almost. Um, funny story, I started a vertical of this back in 2010, and I drank the 2010, the 12, and the 13 out of order and never really decided to open them next to each other. So what better day than today for that. Um, you know, this is Bell's Expedition Stout, clocks in at 10.5% alcohol by volume. Um, this is one that I've always liked to age, and I do generally not like it fresh. I think it's boozy and kind of a mess. So this will actually be interesting to see how this has held up over the last two and a half years. So let's get it into a glass. And I'll let you know what I think. Cheers, guys. So nice hiss of carbonation right off the bat. Um, man, there is, it's like, um, chocolate milk. I can just smell it wafting out of the bottle. Using my Bell's Tulip here. We're going to get into the pour right away because there's not much else to say about this bad boy. Yep, pours that, uh, typical sludge motor oil jet black that you would expect an Imperial Stout to. Uh, fat finger lacing head. Classic, um, you know, really tight, dark bubbles, uh, holding this one up to the light. You're not seeing anything through this bad boy. This is one of the better shelf Imperial Stouts I think you can get um, with a few years on it. It sells out relatively quickly, I believe, in six packs. Um, it's getting up there in price, though. It's quickly approaching $20 a six pack. And not to say I don't agree with that, but, you know, it's getting up there. So let's get into the real, get the nose on this bad boy. You know, believe it or not, I still get an absolute ton of roasted barley and hop bitterness in the front of the nose. Um, deeper inspection. A lot of coffee-like um, chocolate notes, um, like a fudge-soaked uh, espresso beans. Um, really, a, really a lot of chocolate coming through here. You know, um, there is a great deal of hot bitterness, and I'm really shocked. A little bit of booziness. You, can, you know, this thing's got some likes for 10.5%. Look at that. That's pretty impressive, actually. So, nice smelling classic, uh, classic American Imperial Stout. You know, I guess it's Russian Imperial Stout, but what really is the difference nowadays? I'll let you guys determine that. If you know and you think something, let me know in the comments below. Difference between American and Russian, because I think the, it just doesn't really matter. Classification goes out the window nowadays. So let's get the taste on the expedition. Cheers. Thanks for joining me, guys. Yeah, that's held up really, really well over time. Hmm. Right at the front of the tongue, I get that, that classic Imperial Stout. Tons of roasted barley, tons of chocolate, a little bit of uh, coffee, some caramel notes. Um, you know, when this is fresh, I get a lot of dark fruits. Those are really gone. Um, those are completely out the window. This, this is a coffee chocolate bomb right now, and it's drinking really nice. There isn't... Uh, um, really a, a lot of hop character at all coming through on this bad boy it's you know in the nose it's there but you know it all kinda has just melded into a really nice tasting beer you don't really taste the 10.5 percent by volume it's not really there it's it's covered up by just a, a great array of flavors and you know if you've got a couple bottles of these sitting of the 2012 let them sit another year before you pull them out because I, I think, you know, an ideal amount of time for this one in my recent memory is two and a half years. So this is drinking nice. Um, man, 
it's 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 really just sticking into my mouth. Um, it's one of those, like I said in the in the pour, the motor oil. It's pure motor oil, and that's exactly what this one is. And it's pretty impressive stuff for what it is. Well, I think that just about covers it on the uh, Bell's Expedition Stout. Sometimes it hangs around at liquor stores. You should probably be able to find a you know a bottle or two if you ask your local homebrew shop or local bottle shop. It shouldn't be too hard to track down. I, I definitely recommend it. If I had to give this puppy a, a a grade, now you know grading for me is always the hardest part. Sometimes I think it's just not necessary, but um, you know what? We'll stick with the tradition. I'm gonna go. 91 out of 100. I think this is a nice beer. It's like an A- minus for me. It it has a lot going on to it, you know, and two and a half years really has done this beer nice. Um, it's a nice, been a nice cellar experience, uh, experiment for me, but I don't actually think I'm going to continue the tradition, and I may not continue purchasing the beer as I've had it year in, year out, and I'd like to try new things with the market ever expanding. So there you have it, Bell's Expedition. Cheers, guys. Please always remember to respect beer. We'll see you again for another review.